Welcome to Nico Props, I'm Chris Fry, also known as Nicodemus, and uh, today I'm going to be doing some engraving on the, uh, the Muse laser cutter, uh, do a few material tests and actually show you how to engrave onto a piece of birchwood ply. Now it's good while you're engraving and, and working with the laser cutter that you have the proper safety equipment such as a CO2 fire extinguisher on hand. So we've got um, some birchwood here, three millimeter. Okay, I'm gonna put that in there, take my focusing billet, unlock my gantry again, move the head, unscrew it before I get to the material because this is obviously thicker material, drop it down and make sure that I'm focused on top of the billet, screw this back in nice and tight, remove the billet, I'm just going to move this back a little bit because I'm going to need to take pictures of the bed, move it to there, so the camera is above the bed and so is the laser, we'll lock that, That's home nicely. Let's close the lid on and go back to the PC. A quick new project. Let's call that. This is three millimeter, not palatable, three millimeter birch ply um, raster test. New name. Okay. Uh, obviously, I've got a new piece of material in there and it's going to be different so I'm going to then uh, quickly take a height measurement which should be about the same as the cardboard was. It does this with the laser, not too far off and then I'm going to continue taking pictures. And there is my uh, birchwood. I noticed then actually that was quite interesting. When I was taking that, it loaded the old pictures, but never mind. So this was the birchwood raster test. So raster is engraved and vector is cut, just to cover that again. So I need my material file again. I'm going to drop that on there. I don't want to import everything. I want raster only. Open that up. And... Um, and now what I'm going to do is, I've got the raster, it comes up in the corner here, I'm going to move it over onto the material here. i resize it a bit just so it's a bit bigger for you. I don't want it too big because rastering does take a while. Now at the moment, this is a solid block. It's a solid block of colour, which is fine. Um, I'm going to look at the, the, the material here. What do I want? Speed of 25, uh, sorry, power of 25, speed of 100. Um, for raster, so I'm on 25 dpi, so that's the resolution. That's dots per inch is what dpi means. The higher the dots per inch, the um, the more you're going to uh, the, the, the more resolution you're going to get out of it. However, something to be aware of when you're doing rasters and these dots per inch is uh, that as the dots get closer together, you're going to generate more heat, so it's going to scorch them more. So you may have to adjust your power settings. For each one. If you look at my muse here, I've got um, under my wooden bamboo, I've got my birch reply and I've got my cut speeds that I wanted for that. These are the old ones that I've done. Uh, I've also got the raster speed, so which which DPI is it? Is it dithered or not? Um, speed and the power. So I, I've got here, I've already got my test settings here for the speed and the power of speed 10 power of 15 that's what I said they say power 25 speed 100 so I'm doing it slower than what they would much slower so let's try their settings so 25 100 power of 25 speed of 100 I'm not going to use dither I'm just going to do it as 200 and um, 50 DPI. Uh, I'm going to do a quick check to make sure that I'm on the correct place with my perimeter check, which I am. So I'm going to stop the perimeter check. 
quick check on how long this is going to take. One minute 40 apparently. So let's run this. Back over to the machine. Uh, I'm going to do a control click to try and center it over the actual piece of wood. I think it's about there somewhere. Uh, take pictures of the bed again because I've moved the piece. It's interesting it's still picking up those uh, cardboard previews, so it must be cached on the browser. It must be a browser issue, not the machine. Cool. So I can see that my test is there. Let me do underneath the exact same test. I'm going to position that underneath. Uh, I'm going to increase um, to 35. I'm going to add another 10% of power to this. Um, you can also increase, decrease the speed that it runs at, but that'll do me. Do a quick perimeter check to make sure I'm not over the other one. And I'm not, so let me turn that off and run the job again. So, what's the difference between those two there, right? So I've got that and that. Now it's actually deeper on this one than it is on that one. Now that's not a bad engraving, uh, but maybe I would want it darker. So if I needed to darken that up, I would probably reduce the speed. Um, you can then do dithering as well. So let's reduce the speed to my settings and let's, um, let's do a dither. Back over to the machine, take a, another screenshot. Okay, so that's my screenshot. Let's move this up out of the way. Um, I'm going to change my power settings to what I had in mind. So I reckoned that I would have to reduce the speed down to 10 and the power to 15, but I think I'm just going to leave the power up and reduce the speed a little bit. Let's have a little play here. Make it 75. Leave it at 35. Yeah, 35. Um, now then. Dithering. So if you're doing like photographs or something like that, you're going to want different, you're not going to want it as one big block. So Dither does that, turns it into little blocks. Let me zoom in a bit there. So you can see these little dots. So it should end up with this kind of texture when we're finished. Okay. Now if I click off and click back on, you can see we've still got all our settings, the black and white threshold we can play around with as well. Um, but that's for solid colours. So let's do uh, do our raster here. Uh, put that back. Dither. There we go. On the dither, we've got our, our power and, and stuff. So let's run it.
Okay, so that's complete. Let's take that out and have a look. So we can see that that is vastly different. So it's actually shaded it. And if we look closely, you can see the dots in the material. Okay, so by adjusting the power settings and the, and the speed settings, I've made that slightly darker, but I'm also using the diffler. So it's going to be smoother and it'll look more like a picture. Now you can increase the resolution on that by changing the DPI, um, which will make that smoother. Okay, so that's the uh, engraving for the testing. Now what if you actually want to engrave something like, I don't know, a photograph? So let's go and uh, get ourselves a photograph. I'm going to open up Photoshop here. So this is uh, my current profile picture on my Facebook page. Um, obviously it's a bit dark, it's in colour. So what we need to do, we need to do some changes here. So make some adjustments. Let's make it black and white to start with. The standard settings. And then I'm going to adjust the colour and, and contrast because this is going to be too dark and we don't want it to engrave too dark. So I'm just going to whack that out full. That's a good colour. Uh, I'm going to give it a bit more contrast because that's going to make, if you notice as I move it, it's going to make areas darker and lighter, which is going to be better for engraving. That looks pretty good. Now I've already done this procedure. I've already got the photograph, but that's essentially what we're doing. So I'm going to go back to, um, to Retina Engrave and uh, get my folder up with my photo and I've got the original there and I've also got the black and white adjusted one. Drag that into there and that's gonna ask me to import. So I'm gonna import that in there. Okay, so obviously this is massive and this is way too big. So let's resize that and drag it up and to make it a half decent size on the board. Move it over to here, out of the way of the test engravings that I've already done. Okay, um, I'm going to differ it like that. I'm going to do it at 500 DPI, 500 dots per inch, so a bit more. Same raster power, 35, and I want it to be a bit darker, so I'm going to do it at what 60 speed. So we'll see what happens at that. Actually, let's make that 70 because it's going to be a high DPI. Um, let's see what happens with that. So I'm going to do a quick perimeter check. And that is absolutely perfect. So let's turn that off. And we're going to go for the engrave. So, the engraving is done. And have a look at that. That is a pretty good engraving. That is a pretty good quality image of me burnt onto the wood. You can clearly see it's me. You can clearly see it's similar to the photograph. Um, it, you know, it could be, uh, it's quite deeply engraved, so maybe I, I slowed it down a bit too much. But um, yeah, that's, that's really good. I mean, maybe the DPI could be better, but uh, I'm pleased with that. So that was um, engraving on, uh, on the Muse onto uh, Virtual Ply. And uh, as we can see, that the image has come up pretty good on that. Now, uh, if you want to subscribe, you can click up here. For my other Muse videos, they're just here. And uh, for a bit of uh, fun, I'm going to put another video right here for you, which I'll leave as a surprise. Thanks for watching, and, uh, and don't forget to subscribe.